On this episode, we go for a hike to an incredible area with absolutely stunning views. Michael is on the edge, Maz can't get high enough, and we get rewarded with some magnificent light across a jaggedy landscape. Nigel fills his boots with compositions, Jelly Baby save me, and will I be able to capture some time lapses with the king of time lapses himself, Michael Shamboom, right beside me. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. And today you join me, I'm still in Dingle and I'm still here with the guys. And we've come to another stunning location for the afternoon and for sunset. So myself and Maz have come up to the ridge line that you can see here behind me. Uh, Nigel, Michael and Rick are following close behind, but we're here to shoot a shot of a set of peaks that I photographed before when I was on them, but now I'm on a completely different area to photograph them. And those peaks are the Three Sisters, also with Kion Chabelle. And on the most westerly point of the Dingle Peninsula, you've got some fantastic layering that can occur. Now, even as it stands right now in this harsh light, there still is good layering. But what I'm hopeful for, for at sunset is that we get a nice glow in the air. But I'll give you a look here at what I'm uh, shooting anyway in a moment but that's what we're going to do today let's go Now, for my first shot actually here, I am using the long lens and I'm zoomed into 200 mil because I just want to be able to pick out the three sisters with the lovely layering that's within that. And you can see right out to the very edge of the tip of on Farm Arav, which is one of the islands that's off the coast. Now, I'm going into portrait orientation as well because I just purely want to be able to have just these in the frame. Now, on top of that then as well, I zoomed back out slightly and then there's two rocks that are stacks effectively in the bay below. So I've also taken a shot by just dropping the lens down slightly and going back in again at 200 mil to be able to include those also in the shot. But what we have here, I think, is something which is simply stunning. Now, behind me, you can go up to this ridge up here, and then that follows along here behind me there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go along that and I'm going to see what else it also reveals because below me there are some really craggy outcrops which I also think will be some great shots. It is in harsh light hence you can see in regards to the sunglasses but I'm sure that as the sun will drop down because we're here with plenty of time grand and early so we have a good afternoon to be able to play around here and find different compositions but this is my first one anyway here now I'll give you a look at it and you'll see some nice layering within the shots. I'll show you the first one without the two rocks and the second one with the rocks and then I'll take you up here and we'll take a shot and we'll probably go handheld because I don't think I need to have the tripod uh, for there because it is so bright with the light as well backlit I'm able to go for a very fast shutter speed so yeah here's the first set of shots now and I'll talk to you again in a moment Moving along here, along the craggy rock face that is on the top of this ridge, it reveals some really, really nice things for me to photograph. So down below here, there are two even larger stacks, and there's one that has a really great prominent spike on it. So I've taken some shots here now at the moment, even in the harsh light, to see, hi <laughs> Michael. What uh, is this guy talking about? Talking about Come the on. beautiful things we have here. <laughs> what, what, what do you think of here? Pretty amazing, pretty amazing. A good hike. A lot of cool pointy sea stacks. Yes. Uh, sweeping views, a lot of 
wind, get windswept, you know, trying to take pictures. Your eyes are crying, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't complain about that. It's a pretty no, awesome experience. You cannot complain. I'm sure you're going to get some bangers. <laughs> well, we'll see. I think he is. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below if Michael's going to get bangers, because I do think he is. But <laughs> what it is doing right now, even in the harsh light, is creating that fantastic layering that we have along the Three Sisters in Count Chabel. And I've also taken a shot which is in landscape orientation because I like to get the whole area of the peninsula in and looking back in again to, on Tiruct within the frame. So I'm sure as the sun will go down, we're going to get completely different effects. And I'm probably going to go lower or higher, probably both, to see what I can change in the perspective. But for now, I'll give you a look at these handheld shots anyway, because for me, they look great already. So while I'm waiting for the light here to drop, I noticed that there was great contrast uh, along the scene as the light would have danced along. You were getting dark areas, highlighted areas, dark areas, highlighted areas. And I managed to find a shot, I think, where they were kind of corresponding uh, to the shapes that we see uh, in the different layering. So grabbed a shot of that uh, a moment ago here, and I think it was a nice shot. Maz has just come back down. Is it good? Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Beautiful, epic. I just saw he was flying his drone, so yeah, I think it probably was epic. And uh, yeah, Michael is just here, as you can see him, silhouetted by the sun and probably capturing more amazing goodness. So um, for me, I think what I'm doing here while I'm waiting is I got the camera set up down here while I eat my beautiful bag. Do you want a, uh, a gummy bear, Maz? What? Do you want some gummy bear? In a moment, thank you. Okay. Uh, while I eat these to give me an extra bit of energy while I'm waiting, I have the camera set up down there and I am doing a time lapse. Now, I'm inspired by one person to do time lapses and it just so happens he's in front of me at the moment, which is Michael Shainbloom. So uh, hopefully I don't F it up, but yeah, it should be nice. I think with the, the light is dancing across the scene anyway there. So um, if it turns out, I'll give you a look at it next and uh, yeah, I'll check back in then again once we find some more. Landscape photography can be a maze of jargon, buzzwords, and confusing terminology. So let's try and solve it. I want to take you on a journey reminiscent of our childhood. A was for apple, B was for ball, C was for cat, and so on. Now imagine applying that same approach to unravel the jargon of landscape photography. A is for aperture, B is for bracketing, C is for composition, and so on. Could it be that simple? Head on over to darrenspoonley.com where you can download your copy instantly. And imagine having this wealth of knowledge at your fingertips, ready to enhance your own photography skills. So I'm going to head down now to the lower area and to see if I can get a shot from down there, because like I said, there's the stacks that I want to get a bit of perspective from. I don't know what it's going to be like. Uh, hang on. What's it like down there? It is, um, it's okay. I mean, there's a different angle. It's, um, I'm just trying to find different angles really and see what, see what we can find. And is it struggling a little bit at the moment, but it takes time and as the light goes down, I think it's going to change everything. So can you see the stacks easily enough from below? Yeah, you can see the stacks. I just couldn't find a good composition down there. Okay. But I might go back there later. I'm going to um, just take it all in really. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. I'm not too bothered if I don't get a photo from here. There's a lot to take in. Yeah. 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 yeah just yeah, enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs>
So, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Go down. Hopefully, I can find something below as well. Thanks for that, Nigel. Um, and yeah, I'm going to head down below here now and I'll tell you when I get there. Now that I've come down further, it actually has opened up the scene completely. I can see that there's two stacks below me. One of them is quite jaggedy. And then on the right hand side as well, there's this ridge line that comes down and then you've got some jagging rocks as well on that. And then you have the silhouettes in the distance. Now, I've taken a shot at 70 mil, which I thought was a small bit too close. Uh, not overly close, but I could only get one of the uh, stacks below in properly. And then what I did is I moved on to my um, uh, 16 to 35 and I put it at 35 mil. That's creating more on the left hand side here of the hillside um, but I do think as well it'll be a nice shot. Now the sun is just gone behind the bank of clouds there so I am going to try next to put on some filters and maybe go for a longer exposure and see what that will do. Um, I don't know if it's going to work out or not um, because of the uh, the movement and the size of the scene but you know what I might as well give it a go now that the sun has gone behind the clouds it should help me to be able to expose that because it is difficult to shoot directly into the sun and also you know when you're trying to do longer exposure then as well it makes it more challenging anyway I'm going to give that a go I'm going to give you a look at the shots I've taken anyway here when I first arrived I'm going to put on my filters then and then I'll see how we go from there Putting on my filters actually was a really nice idea, I think. Now that the sun has gone behind the clouds, it was a lot easier to be able to get it up to a longer exposure. Now I put on my polarizer as well, just to take away any of the glare that's there. And I also then as well put on my uh, ND1000 or my equivalent to 10 stop. That allowed me to be able to get a 30 second exposure. And with that 30 second exposure as well, I'm keeping all of the sharpness in regards to the jaggedy rocks that are here in front of me. And I actually really like, there's a lot of jaggedness coming up on the left hand side of the frame. And then in the distance as well, the uh, Three Sisters is actually uh, framing on Tiorucht. And on Tiorucht is one of my favorite islands that lie off the coast here in Dingle. But that shot I think is a nice shot now. I'm gonna give you a look at it next and then we'll see what the sky is going to do because right now the, as the sun has gone behind the clouds, I don't know, is it going to uh, make a reappearance again? But yeah, nonetheless, we'll see. I might take a walk around here as well and just go handheld, see if I can reframe uh, the shot. But I'm happy enough with my composition anyway here. Now that the sun has gone as well, actually I might put on my um, 7200 again and go for a uh, 70 mil shot and see what that's like as well because they were so backlit earlier on you couldn't see much of the detail but now I can start to see more of the detail uh, in the shot as well so yeah give you a look at the long exposures anyway now and then we'll check back in again in a moment. I've moved further on over now uh, along the right hand side of the, of the cliff because what I spotted was in my last set of compositions when I was on my uh, 70 mil I could only get one of the stacks in below um, otherwise I'd have half of the other stack on the right hand side so I framed it up with just one but now by coming over to the right hand side there's a ridge line which is now forming the base of my frame I can get both the stacks that are in there and then I get the three sisters which are actually now being lit lovely by some rays of light crespicular rays that are coming in from the sun it's just above a bank of clouds so I think it is going to light up again in a moment now I've got um, 
my wide angle lens on over here as well. I'm just taking a portrait version of the shot. Uh, I'm at 35 mil. I might actually now as well just switch it over to landscape while I've got that uh, set of sun rays that are there too. But yeah, this is stunning. And as Maz, who is over here, would say it is epic. One thing that's also epic is walking over here a moment ago. I went down a hole in the ground and it went past my knee into water. So my right leg is soggy wet, but nonetheless, it is worth it. Now, I'm going to take these shots because this light is getting intense. I'll give you a look at it here, what's happening, and then I'll give you a look at the shots of what I get after that. The sun is doing an incredible dance here at the moment. It is in and out of a bank of clouds that are out here on the right hand side. So what I've done here in anticipation of it going behind a bank of clouds to catch the last of the light as the rays are spreading around here. So I have done another time lapse. Now I think this one as well might work out because I'm utilizing my wide lens so I'm getting quite a lot of the scene and as you can see now the light is just starting to fade on me and if I look at my camera I have 87 more shots to go so that means that I'm doing 300 shots in total so I'll have it in the light and then hopefully as the light moves along uh, and then ultimately disappears behind the clouds. Now looking out to the horizon we do have quite a thick bank of cloud. We are 40 minutes away from sunset so I'm hopeful that for now the light's going to go um, but if it gets down underneath that bank and we get a last glow of light here, I think it will be fantastic. Above me here, if I give you a look at these clouds, these could be nice. And if they catch as well, now they're going to be in the wrong direction, but there are some of them as well. Hopefully you'll be able to see over here as well. No, you can't. It's a bit bright. Uh, they'll also potentially catch. So there are still high hopes and possibilities of getting some really nice shots here. Well worth it now, uh, you know, in regards to where we are, the location, the shapes of these rocks are absolutely incredible. I hope I can do them justice in my images because their layering is fantastic. The jaggedy rocks that are there, the jaggedy rocks below me, the jaggediness of the um, sea stacks, the jaggediness of the jaggediness. Yeah, uh, everything is jaggedy, but as the sun now comes back out again, which would be nice because that will light up and darken in the time lapse, I think it's going to be great. So I'm going to give you a look next at uh, the time lapse and a couple of shots that I've taken then as well in between that. And again, we'll check in if any more happens. So I think our shoot is done. The sun has now dipped into quite a deep 
bank of cloud over there on the west, which is unfortunate because it had signs that there might be a nice diffused golden glow. But nonetheless, I still think it was really, really interesting. It was great actually to be here with the guys and like to see um, Ireland through their eyes. I think I got some really, really nice shots overall. Uh, nice layering, nice haze as well in the distance. And I think it was something that, you know, I would probably here come back here again too, even when there was kind of a clear skies because you'd get some really, really nice shots overall. Really, really liked the jaggedness of the rocks and everything else that's below us here as well. Uh, Maz was over here behind me, as I said earlier on, and he got a lovely uh, time lapse. And up on the ridge behind me here, uh, Nigel is there taking his images and Michael is down below me here which is an area that I had wanted to go to but I didn't have the balls to do it but he did and I think and I hope he's got some great shots so I'm going to finish up this episode thank you very much as always for watching if it's your first time on the channel I really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and if you want to watch another episode I recommend this video here and until the next time schlange voll